Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a pretty intriguing discovery coming from an extremely distant galaxy out there, one of the most distant quasars discovered to date. But before I talk about the actual discovery, I wanted to present what the actual mystery here is. The mystery is actually in regards to the formation of stars. Because when it comes to the star formation and the types of stars in the universe, the scientists today generally divide them into three different categories. Population 1, 2 and 3 stars. With population 1 and 2 stars being all of the stars we've discovered to date. For example, our Sun is what's known as a population 1 star, which by the way is not a particularly good name for this type of a star, but in a nutshell it just means that it's a really young star that's generally filled with a lot of different materials, a lot of different elements that are not just hydrogen and helium. These are metal enriched stars, a result of generations of different supernova producing huge amounts of materials over and over and enriching all of these stars with all of these elements. So for example inside our own sun, at least 1% of stuff is not hydrogen and not helium, with all this a result of possibly up to about 50 different supernova happening in the last 13 billion years. Then we have population 2 stars, which are not as enriched in various elements and are believed to be either generation 2 stars or basically stars like this one right here, extremely low in metallicity and stars that are generally believed to have been created by maybe just a few supernova possibly even just one supernova, mostly containing hydrogen, helium, lithium, and just a little bit of carbon, oxygen, and several other elements. And some of the oldest stars we've discovered so far, including stars that are 12 or 13 billion years old, have all been population 2 stars, including some of their more iconic stars, such as the Methuselah star, that we actually discussed, I guess, less than a year ago, because its official age has been redetermined. But the point here is that all of these ancient stars are still believed to have been created from the initial supernova from some of the earliest stars that existed in the universe. The first stars ever. And that's where the mystery begins. These are known as the population 3 stars, with once again the name itself being kind of confusing and not particularly useful, but the name here implying that these are stars that were created from the initial matter. All of the first hydrogen that used to exist here, with a little bit of helium, formed some of these first objects with possible glow from these stars, previously observed by various infrared telescopes such as Spitzer. But the thing is, this is a really big mystery because they've never really been officially seen, and even the current simulations and current studies don't necessarily understand exactly what these stars were like, how long they existed for, and more importantly, what sort of ending they had. They most likely exploded, producing huge and powerful emissions and very powerful supernova, but it's not even clear what type of supernova they resulted in. And more importantly, the recent study you can find in the description with the video that I recently made as well, that's also in the description, suggested that even though we thought that some of these stars could still exist today, in reality it's very likely that all of them are long gone. And it's also quite possible that most of these stars only existed for the period of maybe a few million years, less than 5 million on average. And this of course means that trying to discover these stars, even using powerful telescopes like James Webb, is going to be extremely challenging because they might have only existed for a tiny tiny fraction of the existence of the entire universe. There might have been nothing and just complete darkness at first, they suddenly then all came into being, and just like that they might have all suddenly disappeared, creating population 2 stars in the process. At least that's what the scientists currently think, based on I guess all of the evidence. And in this case, it's really the lack of evidence and the lack of actual detection of these stars that kind of suggests that maybe this is exactly what happens. But extremely recently, a study came out that might have accidentally discovered some of the signs of the existence of these stars by using an intriguing method observing one of the most distant and one of the most powerful and also most intriguing objects out there. Well, in this case, it's actually a black hole, but a very specific type of black hole an object that we refer to as a quasar, and this is actually one of the most intriguing quasars discovered a few years ago that the scientists have been super excited to study because it represents one of the earliest, one of the most massive, and definitely the brightest object at that distance. A quasar known as ULAS J1342-0928, located at a redshift of 754, which is equivalent to a distance of about 29 billion light years away from us, or essentially represents the universe when it was roughly around 690 million years old. And when originally discovered, this was already a record holder 
and a super exciting object. It was 800 million masses of the sun. It was also extremely bright, visible in a lot of different frequencies, and was already difficult to explain because of its unusually high mass and extremely high luminosity. But since then, the scientists discovered something even more distant and even more massive, and we've discussed this just over a year ago. The video should be somewhere in the description. Nevertheless, this was still an exciting object because it was producing a lot of very intriguing emissions. And more importantly, it was producing emissions where the scientists were able to start figuring out what sort of materials were falling into this black hole and what sort of environment was formed around the black hole as well, allowing the scientists to start to determine the exact elemental composition of the nearby region. And that's of course really important because a lot of this material isn't just empty gas, usually it's also leftovers from various supernova, from various explosions, and of course from various stars that maybe came a little bit too close to the black hole and became absorbed in the process. Or not necessarily entirely absorbed, but first shredded, destroyed, remitted in various frequencies, with some material then falling into the black hole. And so by using a new deductive method, the scientists worked out that in this case the material that was contained around the black hole represented an unusual ratio. It contained approximately 10 times more magnesium than iron compared to what we usually find in objects like our own sun. And this unusual low magnesium to iron ratio implied that all of this was produced in a very specific type of a supernova that's actually never been seen before, but is theoretically believed to exist because of the way that we believe matter interacts. Today this is known as the pair instability supernova, and it's something the scientists believe happens to stars that are just extremely massive. Specifically when stars reach masses between 150 to 250 solar masses, their photons in the center, because of the extreme pressure and because of the quantum effects, start to convert from photons into electrons and positrons. With all of this removing the overall pressure on the inside, the radiation pressure that keeps the star from collapsing, and all of this also becoming a kind of a chain reaction. More pressure, more electrons and positrons, less pressure to maintain the structure of the star and a higher chance for the collapse. And at some point it just can't take it anymore, explodes and most likely dissipates across the universe, across the galaxy. But that process itself is believed to leave nothing behind, unlike other supernova. No neutron star, no black hole, nothing. With the material directly converting hydrogen and helium into much heavier elements which then spread across the universe. But in this case they also produce specific ratio of elements with a very specific chemical signature. The signature the scientists believe they detected in this study, with all of the leftover material then being absorbed by the quasar and the signal emitted for billions of years. And according to the scientists from the study, at the moment this seems to be the clearest evidence we have for the science of the previous existence of these population 3 stars, but in this case based on the already rare and never seen before pair instability supernova, probably from a star that was about 300 solar masses at least. And because the emissions from this quasar are also enriched in a lot of other elements, believed to be produced by these types of supernova, at the moment this is a pretty strong evidence. Although naturally there's maybe one potential explanation that does not involve population 3 stars. This could have been an extremely massive star that was absorbed by the quasar that was actually not population 3 star, just your regular population 2 star, possibly similar to what we kind of find today in extremely powerful and also extremely energetic regions with a lot of very massive stars, such as the nearby Tarantula Nebula in the Large Magellanic Cloud. Here there are stars that are hundreds of solar masses and they're also believed to one day possibly go parent stability supernova as well. But none of them are population 3 stars, and so there's still a slight chance that what the scientists discovered here could be just a regular younger star that exploded in the vicinity of this particular supermassive black hole. But the evidence is still pretty exciting, especially because at least one other study in the past has also possibly detected signs of these ancient supernova and ancient stars in some of the other stars, even in our own galaxy, created from the early matter from these first supernova. But once again, none of this is still definitive, and these are just signs of these ancient stars, with all of them still remaining a big mystery. And to be honest, there's really only one way to solve this mystery at the moment, James Webb Space Telescope. Its main purpose is to try to find these stars, to try to discover their signs or potentially signs of these ancient supernova, or to try to find the time period in the universe when they most likely most of them existed. Right now it's still not clear, it's still unknown and it's still a huge mystery, but hopefully in the next 5 to maybe 10 years 
we might be finally able to actually see them, or at least see the effects from their emissions, and thus answer the question of how exactly the universe evolved in the first 100 million years, and what exactly caused the universe to change from relatively neutral to what we now refer to as ionized, while also helping us explain another mystery in the process. How exactly did some of these really really massive black holes form so early in the universe? And this one right here is 800 million solar masses. It should not be possible for it to exist so early on. And so if this was a combination of various population 3 stars just combining into a large object forming a black hole in the process, that would maybe explain it. But all of this right now is a huge speculation, a huge mystery, and something that James Webb is specifically built for to try to answer. But until it does, we're not going to know much more. Interesting study, interesting idea, interesting detection and interesting speculation, but still not really definitive proof yet. Maybe in the future, but definitely not yet. We'll definitely be coming back and talking more about this. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.